I was saved in 2008. So between that time and my actual baptism of the Holy Spirit, it spanned about seven years. But in between that time, I was experiencing counterfeit spirits. Now, a lot of people in the Christian community call it a kundalini spirit, which uh, stems from Hinduism. Um, they believe that the kundalini spirit's this coiled up snake type of spirit. Ancient yogis also taught that the root of individuated consciousness, the divine essence within man, originates at our first chakra point, the perineum, nestled and stuck by the many fused vertebrae. This kundalini energy desires to travel upward along the spine, illuminating the seven chakra centers and resulting in a fully realized, individuated, enlightened being. When I first experienced it, I thought it was the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I truly did, but I had no frame of reference. Um, what would happen to me is that I would go into laughter. Now, this is where the whole thing that you might have heard of is holy laughter. Marilah kita selalu ketawa untuk diri, untuk orang lain, ketawa untuk keluarga, menjadi orang kaya, ujung-ujungnya adalah keluarga. That is not the Holy Spirit because I experienced that. Along with laughter, I got into locked positions. Now, what I mean by that is that for me, how that manifested is that my head would tip back. I would drop my jaw to the point of dislocation and my head would be locked and I would be like in this perpetual, uncontrollable laughter. I would be in that. But I had no frame of reference and I heard a lot of Christians talking about that holy laughter was the, you know, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. So I thought that that's what that was. It wasn't until later on that I started seeing the other side of the Christian Isle saying that this is not what it is. It is a counterfeit spirit and it is very prevalent in the churches today. Well, so what happened was, is that I was saved, so I was under authority. And you look in Mark chapter 16, verses 15 through 18, I had been saved, so I was under authority. So I, I told that thing to go away. Whatever it was, I didn't believe that you were who I thought you were, this kundalini spirit. Let's just call it that for the sake of this video. So I told it to go away. It never came back. Um, much later on, I did get the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I spoke in tongues. Now, if you're watching this video and you haven't experienced the true baptism of the Holy Spirit, you are not going to understand because we are both coming from a different point of reference, a different experience um, with regard to this. On the outside, 
it can look the same. You know, counterfeits look a lot like the original. You see people who have a true outpouring of the Holy Spirit. They have joy and they have all of this stuff that's going on. And it can look like uncontrollable laughter. It can look like speaking in tongues and a lot of manifestations therein. But I'm here to tell you as one who has experienced this Kundalini spirit firsthand, as one who has experienced and is experiencing the Holy Spirit, they are two completely different things. So we're gonna go into what the differences are. The Kundalini spirit with me and with others, there is uncontrolled laughter. It is based upon sensuality or the experience of the laughter. There is no glory for God and especially not for Jesus Christ during that experience. you are going to have like locked body positions. For me, it was pretty tame, but with a lot of people in the Kundalini spirit, they get locked into like the backwards positions or locked in really funky, weird positions. They may start barking like dogs or acting like animals, any of that stuff. That is this type of spirit, this, this Kundalini spirit, if that helps you to keep that name. That's what that is. And it does, it, you are out of control. You are out of control with that. With the Holy Spirit is a completely different thing. The Holy Spirit gives glory to God. It gives glory to his son. It speaks truth. There is nothing in which the Holy Spirit and the experience of speaking in tongues, it doesn't go against the word. It validates the word. In fact, for me, speaking in tongues, going into the word and reading that aloud, it stirs it up. And that's the other thing. I am in control. I am not in any locked positions. I speak in tongues, but I am always able to stop it. I am aware of it. I know a lot of people, whenever they hear, if they haven't experienced the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and they hear other Christians talking about it, you may have an idea that, well, that means you're out of control. No, you're never out of control. You have the ability to stop it. You have ability to quench the Holy Spirit. You have all of that stuff that's there. Not so with the Kundalini Spirit. Kundalini Spirit puts you out of control and you don't give glory to God. Whoa, I just feel like the Lord is saying, I just feel like the Lord is just saying that, whoa, there's something in the spirit realm happening. Show over there that, whoa, is causing such a tailing in the ground. Whoa, such a The show. Holy Spirit gives glory to God. You are in full control. It, the Holy Spirit never, ever goes against the Word. It never, ever goes against the Bible. I speak to you in this video about this, having experienced the Kundalini Spirit myself and having experienced the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I give this as a warning to any group or any churches that there are counterfeits that are out there. If your congregation or any Christian is experiencing what they call holy laughter, or being slain in the Spirit, or any of those things, that is not the Holy Spirit. Read in Acts, there are three instances, one's at Pentecost, there, the other one was with Cornelius and his family, and the other one was with Paul um, talking to the 12 disciples. There is always a speaking in tongues. That is evidence, Mark chapter 15, 16 verses 15 through 18. That is there. But the kundalini spirit, this deceiving spirit, is there to offer up counterfeit. It may look like it, but it is not the real deal. And once you've experienced the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you're able to spot the counterfeits, and you're able to feel whenever it's the Holy Spirit. I mean.